right. So for people who are not familiar with vitamin D, why is vitamin D so important to our immune systems? What's interesting about vitamin D is it's both a um, vitamin and, ha and a hormone. Right. And uh, it's well known, of course, to be of advantage or, or important for uh, musculoskeletal function and also yeah. has, has uh, functions other, out, out with that, cardiovascular, etc. But, 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 but it has strong immune uh, influences. Okay. Um, on immune defense responses so so this has been known for a long time um it's particularly was probably first came to light uh with respect to tuberculosis and okay. bcg and uh the work then has continued uh, uh, uh with respect to the immune response So why why are why are we all lacking in this uh, in this vit vitamin? It seems, you know, people rightly or wrongly thought that getting some sunshine would would help and would help the synthesis. So why are we seeing these big disparities in in the levels across Europe? It would appear to be related to sunlight exposure and uh, inadequate dietary intake, okay. coupled with factors which attenuate or reduce the ability of UVB to change vitamin D into an active uh, element. That's the case for older, older people yeah. whose skin um, doesn't um, mo modulate the change that UVB enables with respect to activating okay. vitamin D. The same for obesity, obese persons, and also very much the same for black and ethnic minorities or people who keep skin covered all of the time. Yeah. All of those factors um, reduce the ability of the active hormone to be or vitamin to be made. Excellent. So. And I noticed from the article you mentioned that some of the Scandinavian countries have, have known this for some time. And are they fortifying their foods then with vitamin B D? Is yeah. That happening? Yeah. The Scandinavian countries do fortify their foods, particularly uh, a really good example is Finland, where there's mandatory fortification. And in that case, the prevalence of deficiency is less than 1% of the population. That's very low. Low, yeah. In, in wintertime, just to give you an example, in wintertime, in people over 50, 20% uh, in Ireland of people over the age of 50 are deficient. Okay. Um, and all year round, one in eight. So less than 1% is a fantastic achievement at a population level yeah. in vitamin D. And are they, are they using any other micronutrients or is it just vitamin D that, you know, well, of course, then there, there is a, a evidence that the activity is complemented by magnesium and selenium and having normal levels of both of those. Um, their diets would probably be quite high in those two elements. And, and indeed, um, they're, not, they're not mandatorily, however, fortifying any foods with magnesium or selenium. Okay, it's just the vitamin D. Okay. Yeah. All right. And so I noticed that one of the um, NHS trusts in the UK has um, the, the, the medical directors at the hospital um, have suggested that the staff take vitamin D supplements. I, I only noticed that yesterday when I was doing some prep for, for this interview, which is quite interesting. And, uh, you know, are you suggesting that, you know, the, the, the governments in, across Europe now should be taking the same stance? So um, I, I know Public Health England and Scotland and Wales and Northern Ireland, et cetera, et cetera, have changed their recommendations. They have not changed their recommendations, at least in the recommendations, to say that they're recommending supplementation all year round, or particularly for people who are um, what we call cocooning, yeah. uh, because of the immune effects of vitamin D, but rather the other effects and staying indoors, staying at home, etc., would make it more likely to have vitamin D deficiency. They're the reasons given. Um, 
except for Wales, and Wales have noted that vitamin D has, there's evidence, circumstantial evidence for a benefit in immune response, and therefore that contributes to their recommendation. Out, out with that, um, uh, the recommendations are pretty uh, conservative. And so what kind of dose are you recommending that people should have? Well, well, I just want to kind of maybe go back to to the evidence in terms of COVID, if I could. Okay. Yeah, Peter. of course. Um, yeah, so 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 vitamin vitamin D, and I was misquoted in one of these, so I want to kind of put the record right. Okay, great. The, the ACE2, which which is a a an enzyme which which we know enables the um, activity of SARS at the lung epithelial cells. Yeah. That, that is actually um, modified, but its expression is, is attenuated or modified or reduced through, by vitamin D. And if you're low in vitamin D, then the, that, that expression of ACE2 changes and may make it, may make it more feasible for the virus to enter lung cells. Yeah. So, so that's, and that's why what we're saying, we're not saying that vitamin D actually reduces um, the, 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 it prevents people from getting COVID. I don't think, I don't think anybody really is saying that. But what we are certainly saying is yeah. there's strong circumstantial evidence that it will reduce the severity of the response because it also has activity around ACE2 expression in the yeah. lung epithelial cells. Oh, that, that, that makes a lot of sense, yeah. Okay, so let's go back to supplementation then. Do, do, are we saying, you know, are, are we, are we going to be asking the, the relevant authorities so, who are recommending so, it? So most of the recommendations, so supplementation is really important. And most of the recommendations are relevant, are, are have used evidence for benefits, known benefits from intervention studies on, on the musculoskeletal set system. Yeah. Probably for the immune system, and again, robust randomized controlled trials are, are, are not available to categorically state this, but probably for the immune system, we need more vitamin D than recommended on a routine basis for musculoskeletal. So for musculoskeletal, 400 international units, which is 10 micrograms is what's recommended. And we're, 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 we're saying probably to keep, to get levels above 50, which is the, the serum level that's optimum for, for the immune response, you need at least double that. So 800 to 1,000 international units, around 20, anything from 25 to 50 uh, micrograms of vitamin okay. D. Excellent, excellent. Where do you see this research going? What, what, what are the next steps? Um, I, it's, it's, it's very challenging to see where it can go in terms of randomized controlled trials because there's so much other evidence out there of the benefits of vitamin D for a number of systems, particularly musculoskeletal systems. We're not going to get a population-based randomized controlled trial of you know, low vitamin D versus normal vitamin D and who's more likely to get COVID. I mean, that, that, that's, never, that's not going to happen. And there, there probably will be, it's possible to do randomized control trials in the acute setting and give high dose vitamin D and see if the responsiveness is better. However, um, uh, some in ITUs are actually using intravenous vitamin D now, should they find vitamin D to be low. And, you know, again, um, I know there are randomized control trials ongoing in Spain and France looking at intervention with vitamin D in the acute setting. So that might be where our next trials will 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 will, will give us some um, information with respect to this. Okay, fantastic. Okay.